Hey guys, it's Morgan Zeggers with Educate Freedom, and today I'm going to walk you through how you can teach your kids the three main results of implementing economic socialist policy. So let's get into it. Now, the first one is that implementing socialist policy leads to economic decline. This is very basic economics, and you don't have to give an entire economics lesson to your kids to help them understand this, but it is important for them to understand that with socialism, the government is taking over all or some major parts of the economy. That is a huge deal. So all the important goods and services that are provided to the citizens, they are now provided and taken care of by the government. If you've ever been to a government office or a bureaucratic agency or something like the DMV, you will probably be aware of the fact that government spending and the way government manages an office is not very efficient or successful, if you ask me. Now imagine that happening to every important pillar of society in the nation. Things start to decline. And as time passes, the economic decline turns into more major issues like a lack of resources, shortages of important things, even like food, and then rationing of those things. So imagine your food having to be rationed because the government couldn't run the systems properly. The economic decline and the shortages and the rationing caused by number one eventually leads to massive societal chaos because the rationing, the shortages, means that there's a lack of resources for people, including very important things that you need to live to get by. So you start to see people suffering in a major way, and by that I mean starvation. You see massive amounts of hunger on a scale of millions of people in the country. You see more homelessness, you see more health issues because the health system is not able to take care of them. And then you start to to see more crime rise because the law enforcement agencies in the nation are actually more focused on doing the political weaponization jobs sent to them by the political regime, the socialist regime in charge. They aren't really focused on keeping the public safety anymore. And the public safety is declining because everybody is trying to loot and steal and they are more interested in robbing. They're willing to go and do things that they probably wouldn't have done before because they're just trying to survive. They are starving. And here's the problem. That kind of chaos, the lack of safety, the fear, the desperation that is going through society at this point when the economic pillars are collapsing, societal structure is collapsing, and people don't feel safe or feel like they're going to make it from day to day. It's a very scary position for people to be in because when you're that desperate, you're also very controllable. So that leads me to the third and really important result of socialism. It's really all about control. That's why socialism is often called the required step to get to communism or the economic step to get to communism. When you implement economic socialist policy, you are giving the government full financial and economic control of the people. Not only do they run it bad, but they also can weaponize this against you. They can say, okay, we provide your food, we provide your job, we provide your retirement plan, we provide your health care, we provide your home, we pretty much allow you to survive and live on a day-to-day -day basis. If you don't comply with us, we will take these things away. So as you can see, people start to be manipulated and forced into doing things. This also starts to happen, especially regarding elections. Now, a really good example of this is when a socialist regime will say, we have fair elections. We, we're a democratic country. We got democratically elected. What's really happening is the socialist regime is basically threatening all the citizens with, okay, you better vote for us at the polls, or we're gonna take away all the major things that we provide for you to be able to survive on a day-to-day -day basis, like your food, your healthcare, your job, everything. So if you think about it, this is all implied force and massive, massive amount of control. You are no longer free if you are put in this compromised position. So not only are you seeing the government fail to keep the economy running smoothly and leading to economic decline, you see the societal chaos, you see the government weaponizing your access to these very basic goods and services against you and you have to comply if you wanna keep getting them, but you also just see because the government now has full financial and economic control of the country and of you, they're able to have a huge centralized powerful force in their hands. And that is what leads to more tyrannical and totalitarian efforts down the line. So it's a very dangerous position. I personally, after all my years of speaking on this subject, especially to students and learning what's taught in schools, I think the element of control and the dangerous amount of control that the government is given with socialist economic policy, that's really what's left out of the current school system curriculum. So as long as you're teaching this to your kids, that socialism isn't just bad because it's bad economic policy or it's inefficient, all that stuff. It's actually bad because it gives a dangerous amount of control to the government. 
That's why, that's why it's bad. That's why you need to teach your kids. And if you do that, I promise you, you're doing a wonder. You're doing a great service to our country and our country's future. Thank you so much. And if you want to get our full five lesson unit package, if you haven't gotten that yet, five lessons all about teaching your kids about socialism, you can get it for free at educatefreedom.org. Thank you.